morning. <laughs> All right. Good, good day, everybody. It's Jeanette Anderson from Bodacity, bodacity.ca, and Bodacity's Action Heroes. And I am here today with the one, the only, the lovely, Michelle McCullough. So Michelle and I met a couple of years ago uh, through a process called LEAD, where she has been mastering the art of running masterminds and expanding her business and her acumen after coming from the field of rocket science, literally. So we like to tease her, although I'm sure she's getting tired of hearing it's not rocket science um, because it's not. But but she know and she knows more than anyone else. So, just a, a little bit about Michelle. She is uh, really focused on supporting mission-driven entrepreneurs, coaches, and small business owners who are in service businesses who are making, uh, you know, a, a living or starting to make a living from their business and have trouble consistently finding and enrolling their ideal clients. She's very good at helping them to communicate with confidence and sell with authority. Authority. Can you tell it's still actually morning? So they stand out, get heard, and enroll more of their ideal clients. So she's really good at helping them find their unique genius, their superpower, believing in them and helping them own their value. So that's one of the reasons why I asked Michelle here is so that we could support all of you with that. And our topic today is how to create revenue over the holiday season or from the holiday season because I know it shouldn't seem like it, but it's upon us. So it's time to get creative. And a lot of times we miss these opportunities to kind of tie into something that will help us really market and position ourselves. So Michelle is on the ball and is helping her clients and us figure out how to do that. So welcome, Michelle. How are you? I am fabulous. Thank you, Jeanette. <laughs> well, welcome. And I've heard that about you. Okay. So, um, <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself. So, um, where did you know? Where did you come from? Uh, what brought you to your entrepreneurship? Just a little brief idea of who you are. All right. Um, so, long story short, I was born in Texas. Uh, started out in the city. At the age of eleven, we moved to the country where I had literally went from big schools and wound up with five kids in my class. Wow. So, crazy, like. Yeah, like felt like you went back to the house on the prairie days or something almost. So um, it was a very big culture shock for me. And it was really challenging because I had big aspirations and kind of got shut down. But there was this part inside of me that just says, this isn't for me. And I kept pushing to figure out how do I get out of this place? Because this is not where I'm meant to be the rest of my life. And worked at a bank started playing with computers there, decided, oh, this isn't too hard, I'll go to college now, and I'm gonna do computer science and become like a computer engineer or something. Not I, knowing that, as you, do. Like, <laughs> you know, I was like, what the heck, why not, you know? Um, they told me how I could get student loans, so I left, I went to college starting at the age of 22, and did like got three degrees back to back, like all together on top of each other in five years. Uh, as, as you do. Talking about becoming a basket case, you know, like ready to like throw in the, not really throw in the towel, but kind of feel like that every other day. Um, and long story short, I'm looking at who's the interview with and I'm like, I don't want to do stuff that requires a security clearance. It's not me. I don't want to do weapons based things or this. I did have a business degree. That was my first degree, but it was boring the way they taught it. So I switched into engineering because it felt more fun. Um, and all my engineering friends were, you know, having more fun than I was. So anyway, I um, went down that path and I'm looking at the options and I'm like, NASA. Well, I was always interested in space as a kid, like the planetarium and things like that. So I'm going to go to work for them. Okay. Just kept saying it. And next thing I knew, I got the campus on campus interview. Seven weeks later, I came out to JPL in California, Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And they basically just said the job is yours if you want it. So cool. I didn't even have to do any interviews the whole day. It was, we played. So very different from every other interview I, you know, place I interviewed with, which was a lot. And so I wound up becoming a rocket scientist. Yes. <laughs> <As you do. laughs> Literally. And, um, did that for 26 years. Wow. And, I didn't know it was that long. Yeah. And just shy, a couple months shy. And um, 
yeah, I mean, first 10 years were fun. Then it started going downhill. Part of that was because of changes in NASA headquarters and government because there's so much of what we did, which was, of course, government funded. Mm -hmm. And it just got to where it wasn't any fun at all. And so I'd say in the mid 2000s, um, approximately six, seven years or so before I left what I was doing, I, um, I was at a point where I just felt like my soul was dying. Mm. And I could not do this anymore. I mean, I couldn't stay till retirement, which was at that point, you know, over 20 years more. Oh. And so I started looking, like, what's my next path going to be? Mm -hmm. And started taking a lot of trainings with an organization called Peak Potentials. All right. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of it with Team yep. yep. the Canadian. Yep. And um, did a lot of their programs, a program. And through all of that and a lot of different things I did, I started doing some coaching certifications that came out of other programs, not to go become a coach, but because it was really helping me personally. And I thought, well, I'm just going to keep on this path. And I realized I'd actually been coaching and doing coaching consulting stuff my entire life since I was a little kid, like probably the age of seven, at least, if not before. Um, um, no doubt. You know, as you, as you do. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, I was always like helping people like believe in themselves and, you know, like I'd, I'd fight with adults and say, why do you tell them they're no good at this? Why do you shut down their dreams? Like, why do you make them miserable? And, you know, push them down paths that I, they just give up in life. And I'm like, this is wrong. And so I've been like behind people and encouraging in that way my whole life and helping them really bring out that uniqueness in them and their brilliance and own it. And it was just a part of who I was. It's part of how I wound up getting awards at JPL for with teams, igniting team talent and creating, you know, really functional from dysfunctional and asked to come do it again. I don't know how you do it, but come do it again. And it took me many years to figure it out myself because I was just doing something that was completely intuitive. And so anyway, that long story short, it was like, I felt like my soul was dying. I looked for, you know, soul searching, looked for a new path. And it turned into coaching. And cool. I decided, all right, I now know how. I figured out with the help of some people how to get, you know, work with my financial situation and get access to my retirement funds through a convoluted setup to get me started and said, that's it. Goodbye. Because I can't live like this anymore. Wow. That sounds like quite leap. <laughs> um, and, and, and you know, I said we were going to talk about your leap moment, so we'll come back to that. Okay. What, what um, what's your process been in terms of really defining who you work with? So who who do you work with specifically, and how did you end up there? Um, it started out I was being pushed down the path to work with women. I thought I wanted to work with people who were like me, who really were sick of corporate and wanted to find a better path might be in another company it might be entrepreneurial but find another path that worked for them where they felt alignment where their soul came alive and start found out that that's really hard group a lot of times to get to because most of them aren't ready to go somewhere and i loved working with entrepreneurs so little by little it started shifting and those who were in that other position just kind of showed up and i would help them get something started so wasn't planning on start doing a lot of work with startups, but I have probably done 80 plus percent primarily with people more in the startup world, including those who are 70 and above starting new things. I'd say in the last year, 80% of my clients were 70 to 74. Really? Starting a new entrepreneurial venture. Wow, that's so cool, and and I it's it it's cool and, and not really all that surprising because we are living longer. We have people who have tons of experience and wisdom, and expertise, and they just aren't done. I had there was an event this weekend, and I had three conversations with people who are over sixty-five saying, "Yeah, I'm so not done. Now, what's next?" So cool. That's really neat. Yeah, um, so, I mean they're the biggest. You know, bulk are more the startup. A lot of them are in the older, you know, category, um, at least in chronological, uh, chronological age, mindset-wise, they're far from. Um, 
yeah and they have these big missions and visions and things that they want to make happen so i love that's my thing i like doing i'm all about that and i love working with mission driven people people with a real purpose yeah. and so that's the ones i worked with the most i also work with people who are very established and who just feel stuck and want to grow and so i help them like really look and take some of my corporate like jpl skill set on you know looking at the big picture and strategic planning and systems and things and how to make it more leveraged and work for them better so they have more free time to focus on their philanthropy and other things they want to be doing awesome so i know that a lot of the work you do is with helping them with client acquisition and figuring out how to actually make more money which is part of what brought about this topic of what do we do when it's coming up to the holidays how do we really end the year strong and set ourselves up for success in 2019. So what are some tips that you can give our people about doing that? Because you've got a lot of entrepreneurs in the group. In fact, most everybody is. So, and, and a lot of times I think people think the holidays mean it's time to slow down. It means it's time to, uh, you know, that people don't buy much or they don't start things and so forth. And so we tend to pull up, especially in December. Uh, yeah. And so that means we start off 2019 sucky with no revenue coming in. And that's not a good way to set a foundation for a year. So how do we yeah. avoid that, Michelle? Um, well, I've been there myself for, you know, year upon year upon year and feel like, oh, I didn't have anything to sell or I didn't have anything that I could do during the holidays or anything I could promote or especially when I was first getting started. But I, you know, Recently, I was doing a, um, a talk in a networking group that I got invited to, and one of the person who leads it, who's a very established business owner, you know, this is like not even mid-September, and she is like, the year's over. Like, I literally can't make anything else happen. And I'm like, what? No way. And I'm like, I've been there, and I'm like, I don't like this, and I decided I was just going to do something about it, and I sat down, and I gave it some thought, and I put together, which you'll, I'll make available to everybody. Uh, 10 cash injection strategies to profitably ring in the new year and looked at strategies that I've seen people doing, you know, our own mentors, other people in the field, other people that are really making things happen. And if you really get creative, you'll come up with ideas. And I actually sat out in two hours thinking I had maybe three or four individual things I might be able to offer one or two bundles. And I came up with like over 15 possible things I could offer and four different bundles. Cool. That's neat. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, it didn't take much effort. And I'm like, wow, I got a lot more stuff to offer than I thought I did that I could just be offering regularly as well. And so I started thinking about all the different ways we could go about it. Here's like just three or four I'll share. One, I mean, seasonal promotions in and of themselves are one of the biggest cash infusion things you can do. And so take advantage of the season, literally. <laughs> um, Think about how you could turn some of what you have into a seasonal promotion. Like if you've got clients, do early bird client renewals. How, okay. can, how can you look at like clients you have and like you want to retain them and offer them an early bird renewal so that you retain them as a client, they get a break and you get a cash infusion at the end of the year. Okay. So what you're talking about is if you've got, for instance, packages that are based on a calendar year, going back to them and saying, okay, you're going to, um, you know, go into your second year or of coaching, or we have, you know, stage two of our business planning workshop or whatever it might be, the next step for them. Uh, and if you renew now, then you're going to get a favorable rate rather than waiting to renew in the new year. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. cool. I like that. And, and let's go back to the holiday sale for a second. So first of all, um, when is Thanksgiving in the U.S. again? Um, it's typically the last Thursday of a full week. But which which week? What month? <laughs> it's, it's, it's November, and it's either the next to the last or the last Thursday. I have to look and see when okay. I think next to the last. This yeah, because sometimes you guys are a month apart from us, and sometimes it's five or six weeks. So we're, our Thanksgiving this month is uh, this weekend. Um, so... Uh, it's not too late to do a Thanksgiving sale and to be thankful for your clients. Send them out a, I'm really grateful for you. And so um, I want to offer you a discount on, on my services. So that's a great idea. In fact, your appreciation package. Exactly. 
Um, and uh, of course, Christmas and or Hanukkah. Don't forget the, the other holidays. And, and by the way, uh, you know, one of the things that you can do that I've seen done is, is kind of lump them all together. It's a Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, New Year's. festival. Festival. So, yeah, exactly. So, so celebrate those other holidays as well. So put them all together. Okay, great. So holiday promotion, uh, early renewal because of the end of the year. What's another one? Um, you can put together a membership drive or a subscription bundle kind of thing. Depends on the type of business you have. Like people who have more product service, like producty type things. You know, they could put together little bundles of products that then people order on a subscription like where they get them monthly and it's got some that they would always want and some that's like oh new i you know cool things that they wouldn't expect to get or a membership with something like i'm looking at creating an inner circle group and so okay so right. and are you thinking that you should launch that in the new year or launch okay. it now I'm in the launch new year. It for the new year but i'm going to offer it in the holiday season to, as a discount okay so, and part of that is start the new year off with community and with access to resources whenever you need them so that you can grow your business, so that you can create your dreams, so that you can increase your wealth, whatever your, you know, services are, um, take what you already have because most of us have a lot more content than we think. Yes. And so it doesn't actually take a lot to kind of polish it up, put a cover on it from someone at Fiverr and turn it into an ebook or take some of those recordings that we have, send them to temi.com, I think, T-E-M-I.com, have them transcribed, turn those into a quick lead magnet or a, an ebook or a handout or something like that. Most of us have a lot more content than we think we do. Even your blog postings can be repurposed. So take what you've got and turn them into content and put them into a little membership site. What do you use for your membership site? What platform are you using? Um, I'm looking at using Kartra because I've been switching over and it has a membership option in it. Yep. yep. Um, that's one possibility. And the other would probably be Kajabi. I'm, I'm still looking at them. Okay, good. Kajabi or, or Kartra. Yeah, that's what Kartra, K-A-R-T-R-A is what we're experimenting with right now as well. Because uh, it has multiple functionality around a whole bunch of different things and is relatively simple and relatively inexpensive. What we're not sure is if it's relatively robust enough yet so to grow with us and scale with us. So that's what we're looking at. Um, okay, so membership site. That's a great idea. And then just charging a holiday promo maybe. How, how, how are you thinking about the pricing about that? Um, because of certain things that I don't have yet, so I can make it where I really want it to be, and over time it'll go up. I'm looking at the normal price, which is two ninety seven a month, because it's going to have some coaching and okay. uh, interview things, as well as just you know access to materials and other things. But the holiday promo would be ninety seven. Okay, so ninety seven, but it will go up in the new year to two ninety seven, so they can have it for three or four months for ninety seven dollars, and you're including coaching in that or some group coaching that yep. kind of thing. Okay, so it's it's not just a membership site; it's more like a community with with. It's kind of like a hybrid group coaching mastermind thing. That's okay. um, where I'd also have people to come and interview with access to stuff. I'm kind of using a Frank Kern model to look at for the way he does his to model it on okay um, and some others that i've seen of that so, so that i can grow it and do it in a way that you can keep bringing people in over time versus being stuck with a set group okay and hey i just thought of an idea of if you when you create this membership group um you could do a promo so if it's just something where you've got some content and it's a 27 dollar 47 dollar something like that um option or even you know some people do even just real volume and lower lower prices um oh i'm trying to think of the name of the guy who's brilliant oh and he does summaries of books um it's not mentor box um oh, i can't remember his name but he did some really high quality videos that were and then he would create little um kind of summary things like the cole's note version of them but also handouts of the key concepts and he would do two or three books a, year, a month, and you paid ten dollars a month for that, which was brilliant. I think it's where they got the idea from Interbox. Um, 
but he depended on volume. So, you know, you've got lots and lots of people uh, consuming that content, then it starts to get to be fairly lucrative and he didn't have to do any kind of additional delivery. But what I was going to say is that also you can encourage them to make that into a Christmas gift um, or, or into a holiday gift. To, so something, you know, what do you get your entrepreneurial friends or what do you get your clients? How about a membership in my XYZ membership club? Perfect. Love it. Okay. I was looking at it the way I was going about it because I was looking for a replacement for doing some of my clients who are just in the more startup realm that I could bring in more and more easily and serve them so that I can step into some bigger spaces that I want and free up some of my time, but still serve them. Yeah. I at love that. Affordable price. Yeah. Love that Michelle, because a lot of people actually really struggle with that. They struggle with charging the big dollars or they struggle with, um, you know, they, they fear of missing out FOMO, but it's fear of missing out on a client that they want to serve, but that isn't really your ideal or optimal client. So a membership site or something like that is a good downsell to be able to still give them support without it eating up a ton of your time. Now let's, you know, tell the truth. It does take time to keep that populated, to do interviews, to do all that stuff, but that's part of creating your intellectual property if you're doing this. Um, okay, and by the way, those those things could still apply to bricks and mortar businesses, to other other service businesses besides coaching and so forth. So they could do holiday promotion sales, of course, which almost every business does and, and knows how to do. Um, but uh, they can also do that customer appreciation uh, promotion. They could also do a version of a membership site. So if you've got a, um, a you know, many of the clubs have loyalty cards where if you come in a certain every time you come and spend you get a certain number of points but a membership site could be additional information you know like i i'm surprised that many of the the, the chain stores for example clothing stores don't have kind of a, a customer engagement strategy where they include things like image consulting and here's how to wear our clothes and here in a heartbeat because I hate shopping and I yeah. hate all of that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They could easily have an image consultant on staff that does all sorts of content and provides that, which would be a way to get people to come to the website, not just to shop, but to actually engage, which then they'll most likely shop. So that's not a, just a holiday base, but I bet you that would go up a whole lot if they did that as a uh, Christmas promo or a holiday promo. When do people really, want to get a lot of clothes well when they're going out to holiday parties and stuff they want to look good so having an image consultant spend you know five minutes saying put this this is the color you should wear and this is the style of neckline you should have and so forth we yeah they be having people lining up people like you and me oh, yeah and i mean some of these ideas that we've just touched on i mean yep. think about people that you're not doing business with now that are past clients or customers and like you could probably use some of them easily to like really draw back in a fair amount of previous clients and customers. Yeah, exactly. All right. One more weird one that people might not have thought of. What's something that you have on your list of things that you don't see people do very often. Oh, wow. It's like, I'm trying to remember what the other ones are on my list. Cause I shared these um, put them in front of me. Uh, <laughs> I know. I like throwing curveballs. Well, anyway, this is one that I like that I've been looking at like off and on like over the last couple of years. And I've been actually looking up. Um, it's not necessarily for the holidays because all these strategies you can use at any time of the year, actually. But and a lot of people don't. But one is they really look at the calendar and each month you will find that there are a lot of really bizarre special days, holidays that nobody's ever heard of. Look at ones that fit with your business. And what you're doing and just do a flash sale out of the blue around some crazy thing i agree and it's fun and it's interesting and it's different and it stands out and it's not tied in with all of the things that people expect and it's not what everyone else is doing where it's exactly. gonna, and it's going to get attention because it's like say what now <laughs> you know yeah. happy, happy pancake day what are you talking about Exactly. And, you know, and then you can open it up and it's an email about, is your business kind of flat these days? That's what made, pancakes made me think of when, when our businesses plateau and they're flat and how do we get them all fluffy again? And, <laughs> right? So you can tie it into almost anything if you get creative. That's a great idea. And there is a lot of holidays that are really kind of weird and interesting. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure they vary from country to country because I've looked them yeah. up, you know, for the U.S. and there's like every month there's like 
a, you know, there's some a little bit, some there's like a, every day, there's multiple per day. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so just quickly before we leave, um, how do people find you? Um, the easiest way is you can go to my website, www.michellemccullough.com. Okay. .com. That's got links to all sorts of things, and ways to reach me and some freebie things. And yeah. Okay. And, and tell them very quickly kind of what you do. Um, so coaching and so forth. And by the way, given that it, we're having this conversation, do you have any kind of specials? I <laughs> actually do. Um, well, one right now, like through the 10th, because I have a program that I'm working on getting off the ground which is the Holiday Revenue Explosion Bootcamp, which will run from October through January. But in going with that and the um, 10 cash injection strategies yeah. that we talked about already that I'll give you the link for, um, is that anybody who would like a 20 minute conversation with me about how they could look at increasing their revenue and doing a revenue explosion of their own during the holidays, I have opened up my calendar through the 10th of this month. Okay, great. But possible to allow people to have those conversations with me. Awesome. So you're going to put your calendar link in the um, uh, chat below, or not the chat, the um, thread below in the Facebook page where we post this video. So people can book those calls with you to brainstorm about some ideas for promotions. I'm going to put a URL for the Wacky Holidays stuff that's called holidayinsights.com. And it has uh, not only weird holidays, but how you can create your own holiday um, and have that actually registered as a legit holiday because, you know, that might be something that fits with your business. I actually know a couple of people who have made up their own. It's pretty uh, well. That's funny. Okay, awesome. <laughs> um, so so um, she'll put her contact information in the thread so you can book your session with her. And, and by all means, do take her up on it. I know a lot of people say, oh, I'm just going to call and and be pitched and so forth. And Michelle will let you know if there's something she can do to help you. But really, it's about brainstorming, getting some good information, having someone bounce ideas off of. And ladies, you know I'm on you about this all the time, ladies and the gents that are here, uh, that it really is uh, important for us to reach out and get support. Yes, we can generate ideas, but why not brainstorm? Why not reach out to other people, especially when they offer, for God's sake? So and hey, it's like, I promise I don't bite. And since it is only a 20 minute conversation, yeah, we don't really have time to do a pitch. We, if we feel like we are a good fit and might want to work together, we'll schedule a longer conversation to see what that would look like. Awesome. Love it. All right. Thank you, Michelle, for being here. And just one last note before you leave, just real short. What is the thing that allowed you to make the leap from being a rocket scientist? Thank you. To actually starting your own business because that's a big shift to go from 26 years in corporate not only corporate but an organization like that um into being an entrepreneur where you're in a more you know so from a very intellectual endeavor to a very heart-based endeavor from a large organization to working on your own that's a big shift so what was it that allowed you to make your leap well number first and foremost it was that feeling like my soul was dying and that i have to find what's really going to work for me and that i can really feel like i'm living a life that's aligned with who i am and the bigger i had these huge visions of things that i wanted to do to create change in the world and i knew it wasn't going to happen where i was and so i didn't know what the model was going to be it turned into entrepreneurship and starting out down a coaching path and i just believe it'll evolve in the way it's meant to evolve and so there was two parts to it. There was that, which was the easier part. That was actually the easier shift. The harder shift was the financial shift and getting my mind around like, oh my God, no income coming in. I'm like, I don't like debt. I don't ever have any debt. I pay everything off. And to even like putting, you know, investing in the program like I did with Peak Potentials or something. And then realizing like, you know what? Like life's too short plus this is way less expensive than going back to university and it's like actually applicable through, you know, like ongoing versus obsolete the second you're done, if not before. And that was the starting of this shift. And then more and more, I just, I realized like I've always, when push comes to shove or that little thing, you know, angel, devil, I don't know which whispers in my ear and says, you're meant to be doing this or you're meant to be doing more or this isn't the right place that, 
I can only go so far into that space where I feel stuck before something kicks my butt and says, take action. And the biggest shift was really on the financial and then finding a way I could get started. And then just continuing to believe in myself that I will find a way. I always have at every point in my life and I will continue to do so. And worse comes to worse, if you wound up like losing it all, I haven't failed. I just made a mistake. I will find somebody's couch to sleep on and keep moving forward. And I cannot hear you, Jeanette. Oh, there we go. Uh, exactly. And, and there's a couple <laughs> things you said that I really want to underscore because I think there's a lot of people who are considering this leap or have made the leap. And, and like you said, the money part is the part that often trips us up. You that know, took me up the most for like five years before. I mean, I was ready to go and it was the money part that held me back for an additional five years. Yeah. Yeah. Which is really sad because that's five years that's, that's gone that you could have been doing this and you left when you were ready. So um, what I would really encourage you to hear from what Michelle just shared is a really out the worst case scenario. Worst case scenario, I'm going to be couch surfing and I will have no money and I will be broke and I'll have to start again. Or worst case scenario, I'm going to be a bag lady. I literally sometimes go through this little scenario in my head with, okay, if I lose everything, I'm in a bag lady. And I'm living in a shelter. What would I do? Well, I'd beg to get enough money to buy a bucket and a squeegee and I'd start cleaning windows. And then I'd start getting other people cleaning windows for me from the shelter. And then I'd pretty soon have a business. So I know that no matter what, uh, there is a way when we are committed to creating what we want. And the other thing that I really heard there, Michelle, is um, two things. One is you let your dream pull you. You let the, the, the vision really urge you forward. Um, yes, you wanted to not have your soul crushed, but it was also, I know I meant to do, be, do, and have uh, something more and make a difference. So I really appreciate that you followed that urging because I think that it's, women who are on their path is what's going to turn things around. It is honestly the underlying thing that every time I feel stuck or I'm waffling or I'm not taking the actions that I need and I'm like getting closer and closer to like oh my god I'm out of money or something you know which can be very scary um looking at that again and how can I just go out and serve the people I meant to yeah is the thing that will break me out and say all right it'll work out and I start taking action and quit wallowing in fear cool love it start taking action quit wallowing in fear love it that should be a bumper sticker <laughs> <laughs> oh we can make one <laughs> yes we can and sell it for a lot of money okay so thank you so much for being here michelle the the last thing that i heard you say because i didn't say three things was that one of the things that you did was you went out and you created support so you went out and hired expertise uh people who believed in you you got coaches you joined programs that would support you in moving forward and when you didn't believe in yourself you had people who believed in you so if you are thinking of making the leap please make sure you have some support, people who believe in you. So Michelle put her contact information in the thread below. We're always happy to be here and help you and serve you. Let yourself make the leap with support, with someone there to hold your hand in your heart as you do make the leap. Thank you for being here, my friend. And until I see you again, happy holidays. And <laughs> thanks for helping us uh, think about ways to generate revenue through the holidays. And I hope you have a great rest of your week. Well, thank you, Jeanette. Take thank care. You. And have a bodacious week, everybody. This is Jeanette Anderson signing off from bodacity.ca. Bye-bye.